Welcome to the How to Quit Working Show. This is the only show that brings you awesome people just like you who got sick and tired of doing something they don't like and don't care about and have created an amazing life of freedom using what they know instead of just getting paid for what they do. And now, here's your host, the quit working guy, Jeff Steinman. Hello everyone, welcome to the How to Quit Working Show Today, my guest is Madison Harper, and Madison is awesome. She started off in the corporate world. She did that for 10 years and then finally decided, guess what? She wanted more freedom in her life, wanted to be able to choose what she does every day and do something that she really cares about. So she started a fashion business where she was selling women's clothing online, and then she moved into creating a platform that helps people to live a limitless life. She's going to tell us all how she did it on today's show. Madison, thank you for being with us, and welcome to the show. Thank you. Excited to be here. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm excited to have you here because you've got a really fun and interesting business. I'm, I'm so excited to hear more about it. So you are all about exploring a limitless life. Tell us a little bit about what does that mean? Well, indeed, I am about exploring that, and it's really about looking at your full potential. So Mm -hmm. being a human potential expert, really opening that up because a lot of people, the only reason why they're not achieving what they desire in their life is because they're often focusing on the wrong things. Mm -hmm. I don't have enough education. I don't have enough, you know, self-worth. I don't have enough support. I don't have enough time. I don't have enough money. And then they wonder why they're stuck in that rat race position. So Mm -hmm. I'm all about just really introducing that into their lives. Well, that's awesome. So you talk about the rat race. Did you spend some time in the rat race? Oh, my gosh. When I start my major talks, I ask everybody if they want to know a secret. And, of course, everybody loves to know a secret. So they put up their hands, and I said, I have been institutionalized for 20 years. And they look at me and see if I've got any cats or if I've been in jail. And I said, no, (laughs) I've got three university degrees, (laughs) a different type of institutionalization. Three university degrees, and I've been working um, in the corporate world for, you know, over a decade, and then I started working for myself because I was never quite comfortable working for others. I always wanted to be a bit more free. So, Mm. yeah, it's definitely um, some great opportunities are out there for people if they choose. Yeah. Well, what did you do when you worked in the corporate world? Well, I was very fortunate because when I look back to what I'm doing right here, right now, it's almost like the universe conspired to give me the best education possible, not only from a university point of view, but every single job I did has helped me to this point. So I have a sales um, and marketing background, and as you well know, Jeffrey, that if you can't market your business, you're basically, you can't sell a secret. So I'm so thankful for that. I worked in marketing and publishing, and now I write books. I used to work in marketing for a speaker's bureau, and now I do speaking. So I did a lot of um, corporate consulting for the last probably 13 years before I sort of went into full-time into this sort of purposeful work that I call it. Okay. So what what made you decide, okay, that's enough. I've had enough of this. I'm going to go do my own thing because this is what I've always wanted to do. Okay, I'm going to be honest. Ever okay. since I got out of university, I was gagging to get out of the corporate world. Oh, <laughs> there was okay. something within me. You know, I've always been very ambitious. And I thought, you know, one day I would be the marketing director of a big company. But I can remember sitting in the hairdressers once, and I was still studying my master to, Master's of Commerce in Marketing. And the hairdresser was telling me they had all these issues. And I'm like, mm. oh, look, we can totally figure that out. And the next thing I was out on my cell phone talking to my university colleagues going, we've got a consulting job. We've got a consulting job. Oh, wow. That's awesome. I have... Yeah, so I think probably in response to that, my number one value is freedom and then abundance and then working from that place of love. So Uh I think that that desire for freedom has always wanted me to kind of be my own boss. Were you a little bit fearful when you made that transition? Absolutely. I think that I've really noticed that I've had probably three leaps of faith Mm. throughout my lifetime. And I... The, how I kind of got out of the corporate work, I remember returning to my beautiful waterfront apartment and overlooking Sydney Harbor, and I dropped all these files on the ground that were from my corporate office job, and I something inside me just switched and went, there's more to life than mm. this crap. Yeah. <laughs> and 
and I got a, uh, a phone call from a girlfriend who was overseas in New York, and she's going, oh, my gosh, we've got to start this online business, and it's going to be amazing. Let's do fashion for plus-size women because they don't have that in Australia where we're at. And, you know, that was in 2000. And, you know, naivety gets you everywhere sometimes <laughs> because <laughs> we just went for it. Okay. And it was a bit of baptism by fire. So I was really great at marketing. She was really great at the online stuff, but okay. neither of us had an idea about how to design clothes. So okay. That was quite funny. But um, it was, you know, yeah, exactly. Details, huh, for <laughs> sure. But, you know, <laughs> but, you know, back in 2000 as well, people weren't that confident with buying online. So we were a little mm. bit ahead of our time. But what I realized out of that whole situation is what I really makes my heart sing now. And I was good at communicating a sort, certain message. And we got over $3 million worth of PR, which I'm sure you can appreciate because yeah. it's um, challenging to do. And it's, so that's kind of what really started me on thinking that there's more to life than trading time for money. It was so exciting and we had so many opportunities. And because we were getting a lot of media, there was a lot of interest. But we both realized that we were good at marketing, but not so good at selling clothes. Because okay. as we spoke to yeah, locals, they were like, it's a tough trade. Like the rag trade was having a particularly challenging time. Mm. So it was interesting because it was really challenging for us to let go of that business because it was our freedom, but it wasn't our financial freedom. Mm. And I said to my business partner, who was my best friend, I said to her, look, everybody's getting paid other than us and mm. we've just got to let it go. So we actually found someone to buy it oh, cool. and it still exists to this day. And um, so that was kind of our first taste of freedom even though it wasn't financially rewarding at the time, it actually was the first stepping stone for me being where I am here today. So it was a blessing. Okay. So what, so what happened after that? So we had to go and make money, you know, yeah. <laughs> which was what a lot of people are caught with because they want to follow their dreams and they don't know how to monetize that. So I decided that instead of going back and being an employee, I would start and be a consultant. So I felt like I had some semblance of freedom. And I was I used to joke that I was um, a consultant uh, with a bit of a bad attitude, but always okay. charming in my way. They, yeah. You know, they'd say, can you come in at nine? And I'm like, no, that's, that's peak hour traffic, you know? So I really... <laughs> um, managed to and they were all very gracious with me because yeah. you know my personality sort of allows it because I'm not being totally obnoxious but mm -hmm, putting mm -hmm. my you know beliefs out there of what I you know what I want out of my life yeah. so that it was very fulfilling and also very financially rewarding and I really enjoyed the work and as I said a lot of that work from website stuff to SEO to PR I did for my many clients which I later use for myself to this day but it was fulfilling financially and from that point of view, but it didn't fill my heart is probably mm. the best way of saying it. Okay. So, th so then what happened? So basically, I've had, um, as you know, it's quite challenging for any small business or entrepreneur to be open for more than five years. I think yeah. the stats are 90% fell within the first five years or even yeah. two years. So I managed to keep that business alive and... I still consult from time to time, but only through referrals just okay. to help out. But I've had that business for 13 years. So okay. I managed to really sustain and flourish and be well-respected in that arena. But I really still had that desire that, and I call it purposeful work. And I guess every part of our existence is purposeful because what I noticed when I went in to these corporations, apart from doing the marketing and the project management and all that kind of strategic work, I noticed a lot of my clients, the employees, I was like Lucy, you know, from Peanuts, where she'd put the doctor <laughs> in for five cents and, you know, you could go and talk to her. Uh -huh. I would get a lot of that my clients and colleagues because for some reason they saw something within me maybe that I did have an abundant and joyful life more so than they did mm. and they really tapped into that positivity of my energy because I didn't allow that kind of gossip and office politics into any of the projects I worked on mm -hmm. so I noticed that it was important 
And I enjoyed that aspect of them, almost mentoring them and giving them different perspectives so that they could flourish in their current environments because not everybody wants to be an entrepreneur, yeah, right? Sure, sure. Thank goodness. Scary. Like what a crazy said. world this yeah. would be. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, so that's fascinating because you and, – and this is so interesting because every time I talk to someone, we talk about how they transition from one thing to another. They always yes. have taken – something that they learned or yeah. experienced or whatever it is from what they did and then they move that because I in other words I'm, I'm getting ahead of you because I think I know where this is going yeah. but, <laughs> but keep go keep going with what was next so basically I worked over those 13 years from five days a week to four days a week to three days a week to two days a week to one day a week. Uh -huh. And because I had established my reputation, I was getting basically paid one day a week what I used to get paid five days a week a awesome. decade ago. So that was a very lovely situation. Yeah. And what I was doing on those other days was building that side of the business that really made my soul sing. Okay. So I was very brand schizophrenic for years. I felt like I had a lot to offer, but the brand schizophrenia was so um, confusing for me. And then about two years ago, I sort of got into this vision of seeing people around me thinking they had no choices. And as you said before, people often think, wow, you know, it's, you know, why don't you just have the secure job? And I would look at them and I think, wow, if you got retrenched tomorrow or let go from your job, you would be devastated and be looking for another job. If I have an opportunity that tends to float away from me, I've got a million other opportunities yeah, yeah. that is overwhelming. And I realized that it was just the way people perceived their lives and their choices, which was limiting them. So mm. that's how the whole limitless thing came about. And I actually did my PhD on that topic of looking at the subconscious mind and exploring how it's in people and how to overcome it. So the PhD became the book, which became the bestseller, and here we are today. <laughs> that is that is awesome. So when you talk a little bit about – you mentioned brand schizophrenia. Can you talk a little bit about what, what brand yeah. schizophrenia is? Well, to me, it was not being able to pinpoint something that I could easily, effectively communicate to a market. And mm. that means not only could I not effectively communicate it, but I also couldn't put sound benefits around it to mm. excite them and really call them to action. I had so many things I could offer. And, you know, that's kind of the challenge when you've done a lot of study or you've had a lot of experience. And mm -hmm. it's really challenging, as you know, to go out to the marketplace without a strong brand. And I really suffered from that. And it was just by, I call it connecting to my inner guru, which I say tapping into that universal wisdom that's available to everybody, yeah. that it started to all of a sudden download for me. I'm like, like, oh my gosh, people are limited. So what's the opposite of that? Limit less. Mm. Let's teach them how or yeah. guide them. I say, I say, I guide. <laughs> you, you said what? I say I guide them. I don't guide them. teach okay. anything because, okay. yeah, because everybody has their um, very specific uh, recipe for life sure. and I can teach them my recipe and it might be the wrong cake. You yeah, know? yeah, <laughs> so. yeah. Well, you know, th this I'm, I'm so glad that you brought this brand schizophrenia up because this is something that I see with clients and people I work with all the time. And, and what, what ultimately happens is that they have so much to offer, just like you said. They have a lot to offer. They have a lot of great life experiences, and they just have a tremendous desire to use what they know and what they've experienced to help change other and improve other people's lives. But what, what we struggle with – is figuring out what that thing is that we know and that we do and, and that transformation that we can offer and translating that into really clear marketable benefits. Absolutely. So, and, and it sounds like you, you also struggled with that, but being a marketing expert yourself was certainly a huge advantage because you knew you had to get there. I think a lot of folks who aren't exactly. experts on marketing, they don't know that's where they need to go. So what, kind of, what advice would you give to somebody who has just a ton of gifts flowing and they, and they probably have like a website with here's all the 95 different things that I do, yes. right? And there's no, there's no real cohesiveness there. There's no real brand. So what, what yes. kind of advice would you give? to those folks? 
I've got to say, you know, you did say that there is an advantage of, say, me having that marketing background. And I do, I'm very thankful that I have it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, sometimes when you have no clue, you just get out and do it. And I used Mm -hmm. to watch entrepreneurs just, just go by the seat of their pants. And I'm like, they've got no business plan. They've got no brand. They've got no idea in reality. And they were flourishing. And I think Mm. sometimes I overthink things. So what I noticed (laughs) over time was that, and you've probably experienced this this as well, that in the corporate world, we have business plans, marketing plans, strategic plans, five-year plans, one billion a year plans. And (laughs) then every quarter, (laughs) every quarter they assess these plans and then they reel back anyway. So it's like, what's the point of the plan when you're not going to stick to them? You know, I now is, um, I recommend to people to have like a one or two page plan for the year because otherwise they get so overwhelmed Mm -hmm. and really, what do we really need to know? Okay. I want to do one online product a year. Oh, I want to do five articles that I'm going to send out to people to get on their websites, to get traffic back to mine. I want to do five uh, Facebook posts a month. It's not rocket science. We right. just need something to keep us on track. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. That's what I recommend for people. And in terms of figuring out what your offering is, it has to come back to that question. If you knew time and money were not an issue, what would you do? Mm. And it's what makes your heart sing, what you would do for free if you could do it for free. And that is usually something that you can really strongly put out into the marketplace because it won't hopefully burn you out because you're excited by it. Although yeah. some people turn their hobbies into their work and then they hate the hobby. Um, sure, sure. But, you know, hopefully it'll help them really look at things. And also the things I say to people, well, what do people ask you for advice on? Um, where do you go to in the bookstore that you, is there a favorite topic that you always go to? What movies do you love and why do you love them? And you'll often see a theme that's going on. And that's a really good indicator because people think that they've got to have this big grand purposeful scheme. And you know what? Their purpose is just to be happy. Mm. So whatever makes them happy Mm -hmm. is right on track yeah no that's that's awesome and i love the two the two page year-long plan because how simple is that simple (laughs) right if if it doesn't fit on two pages and you're probably you're probably taking on too much that's awesome. And you're not going to implement it. I've seen it time and time again. They just don't implement it because they come so, become so overwhelmed. And if they can just take a few little sp- steps each week, you know, because that's what happens to entrepreneurs. We get so excited. There's so many opportunities. Yeah. But then we're like, you know, mouse chasing around. Oh, there's another new one. And we never finish the old one, you know. Yeah. So yeah. I'm not saying not to finish things if they're – I mean, don't finish things if there's no, they're no longer inspiring, but also don't stop because you're challenged by it either, and that's a fine line of knowing the difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so, you know, you, you mentioned something that's the kind of close to my heart. <laughs> you said you like, you like the finer things in life. You mentioned you had, <laughs> yes. you had, you had a beautiful uh, apartment with a beach view. How, you know, I think that's yeah. tough for a lot of people because, I mean, I don't know very many people who don't like all those things. Some of us, I, I think, get more into it than others. But, um, but you know, as you're doing all of this and as you're going through the transitions that you went through, did you find that it was – did you find that you had to give up some of those things? You had to give up some of those nicer dinners, some of those you know nicer bottles of wine, vacations and things for, for a short sure. term in order to get to where you wanted to be? Well, you know what I found really interesting, especially in the beginning when I – as I said, I went from five days to four days, and on the other days, I'd be doing my – what I call the purposeful work. Uh-huh. I found that when I was doing the stuff I loved, I didn't have the need – for the other stuff so much because mm. in the past I was buying myself all these Gucci poochies and smoochie bags, uh, you know, okay. to make myself feel better. Yeah. So I didn't have that big need. Saying that though, I had a challenge around transitioning because I had a belief and proof that I could make exceptional money from that marketing business consulting. But I had no proof that I could make it as an author and a speaker. Um, So that was very challenging for me. And for the first probably six months, a year, it was a transition period. And I did still have money coming in from my consulting job. Mm -hmm. But it's interesting. The universe just decided one day that's enough. No more consulting work. Mm. And they I think it was basically imploring me to say, come on, step into it, step out. It's Mm. time to do it. And 
it was a huge leap of faith and mm-hmm. trust in the universe that everything was going to be fine because I was coming to it from the right heart space. And it, it was uncomfortable. It was definitely uncomfortable. Yeah. I don't like – I like to live by what I – choose not what i can afford and when i have to go into what i can afford mode it's not a good place (laughs) right no i understand i understand that well so so what what did you so it sounds like the 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 thing that you did that really helped you get through that was focusing on what you loved yes and also i had to do a lot of focus on my beliefs and work with the subconscious mind Mm. because i had to change that within me to think that I couldn't make money in another way. And because, you know, where's entrepreneurial school? There is no entrepreneurial school. If anything, you know, my husband's an entrepreneur as well. He's an inventor and he used to go to the coffee shop with his buddies and they'd go, why don't you get a job, get a proper job? You know, (laughs) that's what you get thrown at you all the time. You know, my parents, you know, where do you get your money from? I hope you can pay your mortgage. It's all mirroring your internal fears. You yeah, know? yeah. So there's, you've got to have huge belief in yourself. And you've also, I think, kind of got a dialogue within yourself when these fears come up. Say, well, why are they coming up? Are they really serving me? And if they're not, just send them on their merry way and plant something new in there. And you really do fake it till you make it quite honestly in the beginning (laughs) yeah that's for sure that's for sure but so so tell us a little bit about i mean speaking of that so tell us a little bit how did you how did you build your limitless brand and uh and 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 the book and kind of all the all that went into that Yes, it happened really quickly, and that's what I've noticed. When you are clear, you are on track, and it, all of a sudden it's something, there's like a force or energy that propels you forward. Mm. So I did the thesis over two years, and um, I had a worldwide study of people. I basically had um, tapped into that universal wisdom that I talked to that I call your inner guru, which we all have, your intuition, gut, whatever you want to call it. And I downloaded um, kind of work that people could facilitate so I could see if the process worked. And after that, it was quite clear that I was to turn it into a book. And fortunately, I managed to have a lot of JV partners, joint venture partners, so that I could get it out there. It would become a bestseller, and that happened all very quickly, like within a six-month period. So oh, that, awesome. it's called Limitless 10 Energy Accelerators, yeah, to access your infinite potential, and it's super easy to read. And now I'm doing book clubs, group coaching, speaking around it, because you may know something about me that I hate trading time for money, and anything that I can do that creates residual income, yeah. ugh, like makes me the happiest girl in the world. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that's awesome stuff. And we're going to put a link to the book below the show. So if anyone's interested, you can just scroll down and, and get a link to that. But that's awesome. So what would you say, like, what was the, what was the, the most effective thing that you did in terms of getting your, yourself and your name out there? What was the thing that you did that propelled you forward the most? Okay, well, probably one of the things I find really valuable if you have the skill set is I love doing PR. So I love getting content out there with my name, either being Mm -hmm. interviewed or writing articles or doing videos. I like to do videos just because it cuts through that online clutter. And I find that that's one of the best ways to do that. And the other thing I really enjoy is I love the online experience because I can do it until midnight. I can do it when it suits me because I'm not an early riser. (laughs) Um, So that's really amazing. And I think that that was probably one of the best things I did. Now saying that you do have to have a a little bit of a basic skill set, but you can always, you know, find online how to write an article and make sure that it's full of keywords that people love and you know they people find you and you have your resource box at the bottom so they go back to your website and I just found doing simple things like that and I am somebody who does work on my own because I prefer it and I have people who work with me I tend to have contractors I don't even want a team that's how free I want to be because I don't want to be kindergarten cop you know I was kindergarten cop for decades yeah Yeah, exactly so um you know and just knowing what I've done I don't know if your uh, listeners know anything about an Alexa rank but an Alexa rank is it's actually a toolbar that you can put on your website and you can see 
how a website ranks in the world. So yeah. obviously, guess who's number one? Google. Yeah. Number two, I think, <laughs> is YouTube. Yep. You know, and I'm a chick that like sits at home with two dogs and a cat and a husband, and I'm 479th in the world, 479,000 in the world right now. Wow. Like, it's pretty good. And yeah. I know what I had to do to do that. And it's not a lot of work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, that's awesome. So, so you really, you just kind of, you just kind of went with the grassroots internet marketing stuff and that was, that was really did. successful for you. I did. I did. I love that because, um, as I said, I also love the internet and online is because it can create the biggest ripple possible. Mm. If I go and speak to an audience and it depends what part of the world I'm in, but Australia's population is like 24 million. Mm -hmm. It's tiny. If I go to an event here, it can be anything from 25 to 300 people. If I go to the U S it's a different situation, but online I'm hitting thousands and thousands and hundreds of thousands of people. So it creates a fantastic, fantastic limitless ripple yeah well that's awesome that's awesome well so you know I, you've, you've talked a lot about your your lifestyle preferences that's mm. kind of been peppered into everything that you say you, know, yeah. you don't you don't do yeah. early morning meetings no. and, uh, <laughs> you don't like to trade time for dollars but well no. and, and i and I, I never ask lifestyle entrepreneurs what a typical day looks like because there is none yeah. right i mean if there yeah. was then we would get bored we wouldn't be doing this but uh, yeah. tell tell us just a little bit about what does your life look like like what 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 is is it, you know, what are some of the typical things or, or some of the things that, that you do sure. on a regular basis? Well, my life looks pretty awesome. So that's probably why all those coworkers are like, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> because they, they like, I want a piece of that. Yeah. So I, I am a late riser. So doing this interview at this time does not bother me at all. It's midnight in Australia, which is where I am right now. Okay. And, um, you know, I'm often up working. I do like to get up at that nine, 10 o'clock. And I really try and balance what I call the four counterparts of the soul, which is the physical, the emotional, mental, and spiritual. So mm. one of the first things I do is take my dogs for a walk because, okay. you know, it's a great 5K uh, walk. You know, we both get a lot of exercise and it's just really good to keep that physical going. I come home, I've got this new thing now where I time how long I respond to emails because I really? was just watching. Yes. I was watching my life just drain away by crazy things. And I thought, my gosh, the hour that I've just spent on this. And I heard this the other day and I thought it was just brilliant. It was by Brendan Bouchard, who I absolutely love to follow. And he said, your inbox is filled with other people's agendas. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yes, <laughs> it is. It is so <laughs> true. It's so, so true. true. So I thought this morning, for example, I went, I'm doing half an hour. And then I basically scan the emails and I see what are the business emails, maybe some media stuff that I have to do. I do them for half an hour. And then I get on to some core things from the day. And how I decide what I do for the day is I basically just sit in meditation and say, what do I need to do today? And I get really specific answers. Like today it was redo my website banner and set up a new intro for my video and set up Madison TV, really specific things. And I can't tell you how quickly things have evolved since I've started doing that, hmm. despite all the strategies, despite the millions of pages of marketing plans I've written, if I just wake up and say, what do I need to do today? It's like I get this amazing universal guidance, and that's how I've been able to do everything so quickly and effortlessly for once in my life. You know, I was always a workaholic, and now I just try and work you know, five or six hours a day, if that, you know, and yeah. so I work yeah. with that guidance by asking that question every morning. You know, I'll have lunch with my husband. We might go out. I'll, you know, see friends in the evening and things like that. So I do try and um, really balance that with the spiritual. It is the meditation and the emotional is just really, you know, fulfilling myself with fun and enjoyment and peace, all that sort of stuff. So that's how my day is usually peppered with really fulfilling those four counterparts of the soul so that they're not equal but at least balanced. Yeah. You know, that's awesome. And, and I always say that the key to lifestyle is you've got to flip it around. and You've got to get out of that. Yeah. I have to do all of this stuff first. You know, yes. and then I get to have fun, and, and you have completely flipped that around. And you know, you, you, you can say <laughs> that we are. I mean, you can say that to somebody as much as you want, but I don't think you really understand what that means until you've done it. Until you've made that flip, when you say, "No, no, no, no," what I want comes first, and then and what everybody else wants. 
Yeah, absolutely. It's very challenging. It's a big challenge. Yeah. And not only that, like putting my priorities right, because let me tell you, I did a book club and group coaching the other day, and I was working with a team on how to get over what they believe. Like, because every week, for the first four weeks, they'd come and they'd be given, like, I call it play work that they had to do, and, you know, it's based on the book's chapters. And I'm like, how did you go? And they'd be like, oh, yeah, I did half of it. And, you know, being a little bit of an achiever, I kind of got a little bit annoyed. <laughs> so hmm. I was thinking, I said to them, look, it's book club and group coaching, not book club and go home and do nothing. You yeah, know? So, yeah. <laughs> so I thought, okay, this week I'm going to get to the root of why they're not doing it. Because, you know, when I said to them, why do you think you can't do it? And they said, life gets in, in the way. And I said, okay, let me explain something. Life gets in the way of my happiness. Life gets in the way of my peace. Life gets in the way of my abundance. That's what you're really saying to me. Yeah. So this week we actually just – documented all the challenges, but we got to the baseline thing. For example, people said they spent hours on Facebook and the internet. That's why I'm cutting these emails down to half an hour at a time, mm -hmm. maybe twice a day. You know, they're distractions. Why are there distractions? Because it's escapism. Why are we trying to escape? Because we might be fear of failure, fear of success. That's the baseline issue. And so what we did in that book club is that we used uh, the emotional freedoms technique, which is a tapping energy alignment tool. And, um, to help relieve all those illusions that yeah. people are working on because <laughs> yeah. they are illusions. Yeah, yeah. That's and that's it sounds like you know you were in that 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 group coaching situation and it seems like what you discovered was that that session needed to go in a completely different direction than it was scheduled to. And uh, and that probably was the most valuable thing that you could have done for them. So that that's one of the things that makes so cool about group situations like that. Yes, and it's so true. If I had let it go on, we would have been at week 10, and they would have achieved a quarter. Yeah. If we had to overcome those blocks, it yeah. would have been a huge challenge. Well, and I suspect that that has given you some insight into the next program you offer. Maybe you, you'll start with something like that. Absolutely. Isn't that and awesome? It is. And I mean, one of the exciting things that's come out of all this is that just as you're doing, I'm also interviewing people who have limitless lives. And awesome. one of the benefits of that is I also get to talk to amazing people. So people like Ariel Ford, who was Deepak Chopra's um, publicist, or Marcia Schminoff, you know, number yeah. one New York Times bestselling authors. And you get to ask them all these awesome questions. And when I was asking them, so what's in your toolbox to live, live a limitless life? They had the same tools in there and one of them was this EFT so then I thought I'm going to interview the next generation of the EFT guys oh, okay, <laughs> so cool. to Nick Ortner so it actually spurned off exactly as you said a whole other thing that I'm now placing that in a membership site Awesome, and I'm awesome. going to be offering that too. So it's amazing when you do follow your flow yeah. um, and not just your thoughts because the mind has been the leader for far too long yeah. and got us nowhere in many situations. Um, it's amazing how things really come into fruition with that ease and grace. You've got this lifestyle that is built around what you want and what makes you happy. How does that work and how does that affect your relationship with your husband? Well, it's kind of good that we're both entrepreneurs, but I used to laugh before that we either had really rich months or really poor months. You know? <laughs> yep. <laughs> But um, – and he's an, uh, he's an inventor, which means that in order to put patents and intellectual property around things, mm -hmm. costs tens of thousands of dollars. Mm -hmm. So it's really expensive. I mean what I do is so cost-effective because it's basically me, my brain, my computer, and some contractors. Yeah, you know, yeah. when you're doing IP, it can be 100000 and you may not sell it. Yeah. You know? So yeah. you've really got to have the guts. And thankfully, he, his background is in sales because a lot of people invent things and then don't know how to sell it and it's dead in the drawer. So we do both work in the same environment. I've refused to get an office just because of that whole freedom thing. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Um, so we do both work from home and do our own things, but it also gives us a lot of time. Like we took one of our dogs to the beach today and just kind of had a walk around and, you know, they're shooting a TV program there, how to watch of that. You know, it was three o'clock. Cool. It was great. I love that. I love that flexibility and the fact that because we do work for ourselves, you know, we travel on average three months a year. That's awesome. That's awesome. Do you work when you travel? Look, I try not to, but uh -huh. sometimes I might be doing speaking, so it's a little bit of working. Um, but you know what it's like when you tend to work for yourself. You have a, I don't know, you might not have this, but I definitely do this, inability to turn off. And yeah. I... 
if I get inspiration while I'm away, I'll tend to write it down in my iPad, but then I'll leave it. Because I really do think, you know, from that four counterparts of the soul, our bodies need rest. Our yeah. minds mentally need rest. Because I think if you're too full in the mind, there is no space, there's no blank page for inspiration to come through. And I am sick of working from perspiration. Yeah, so, <laughs> it's important. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and I think that I think that there's a clear difference between something that you let flow out because you're inspired yes. and just that whole kind of being obsessed kind of a thing. I had, uh, in fact, on Sunday, I don't normally work on Sundays, um, but on Sunday I was um, just actually sitting out in the backyard and I got this really kind of cool inspiration for a blog post, which I just went ahead and read. And, uh, and it, it, that, you know, that wasn't a, that wasn't a, I'm obsessed with my business. I have to be doing something all the time. That was a, you know, this is, this just feels right. And I just, this is what I want to do right now. Absolutely. And you know what? Sundays are, I don't know, very, very inspiring for me. And yeah. Also, when I walk my dog, because I think it's out in nature, it kind of get it. And the other place I hear people get a lot of inspiration is in the shower. Oh, <laughs> like, yeah. There's sure. something to do with water, and people yeah. just get in, like, great ideas. <laughs> I think somebody's done some studies about that. That's interesting stuff. Yeah, it's yeah. amazing. So if you're stuck or you get writer's block, take a shower. Yeah, exactly. So, so Madison, what's the biggest mistake that you've made on this journey that you've taken? Oh, the biggest mistake I would say is not being balanced during periods because mm. I, I, I will say I am Madison Harper and I am a reformed duaholic. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I overwork. I have a tendency. I'm going to affirm it in the past so I don't slip back into it, but yeah. I have a tendency to overwork. I had a belief. And it's, I think, a common belief that if you've got to work hard in order to prosper. And mm. um, I would work probably 12, 13, 14, 15 hour days. You know, I do my consulting work and then I do this other work, what, what I was trying to get up and running. So I think, and that was actually the catalyst of how this all happened. I got energetically burnt out. Mm. I was exhausted and I took three months off. And when I took those three months off, that's when everything just was revealed to me. Do mm. the limitless stuff, do the, you know, the PhD, the book, and it was amazing. And it, like I said, it happened in the last 18 months to two years. And that's incredibly quick to do a PhD plus get a book and make it a bestseller. Yeah. Plus, you know, <laughs> brand, you know, so I realized I was kind of taking things from the wrong end of the stick. And, you know, we were talking about the work before, and I've realized the true work is that sort of personal development side of things mm. because a lot of people are going, oh, I've got to do this and, you know, check my Facebook and do this work and do all that. And I noticed I would do that. And if I could do the personal development work, I'd try and shove it in the end of the day. But I didn't do it from a place of like gratitude. It was like another thing on the to-do list. Mm -hmm. And when I decided to, as you said, flop my day around and do the personal development work in the morning as the foundation, that's when everything really flowed. And the challenge, and it was uncomfortable. It was uncomfortable. Not working for three months was really uncomfortable because I thought if I stopped doing, I'd be stuck. Mm. I didn't want to be stuck. Mm -hmm. So it's like breaking an addiction, basically. <laughs> so true. What is the final thought, the most important thing you'd like to leave our listeners with? I think that I'd really just want them to know that they do have access to their infinite potential and their lives truly can be limitless. Mm -hmm. And it's a simple, usually focus on looking at the minds and the thoughts and the feelings that they're emitting because that is the key and the awareness that is giving them an idea and a clue as to why it's not happening for them. So if they hear themselves saying things like, oh, you know, there's no good jobs out there or I don't have enough education, there are the keys right there and then that is basically just cutting off that limitless connection. And it's a real opportunity once you gain that awareness to just turn it right around. Mm. And it's truly possible for everybody. I don't care what education, what lifestyle, what country, or, you know, what the financial situation, you can have access to amazing potential. And I always say, look for the power of one. If you're looking for something and you want to do something really badly, find at least one other person that did it and let them be your inspiration. Because if one can do it, anyone can do mm, it. So such great advice, such great advice. Well, Madison, where can our listeners go to get more information about you and get your book? 
Well, they can visit madisonharper.com, and that's M-A-D-I-S-E-N-H-A-R-P-E-R.com. And there's loads of free resources on there as well, everything from how to identify your values to meditations on how to kind of relax and reconnect with that universal energy. There's courses, and I'm actually running a free 10-week Uh, introduction to meditation and energy work. So if any of your listeners want to go on there, they can do it anywhere in the world at any time they want. (laughs) Awesome. I see we can sign up on the right-hand side. You've got meditation uh, newsletters there as well. That's awesome. (laughs) That's awesome. And the name of your book again? It's Limitless 10 Energy Accelerators to Access Your Infinite Potential. Awesome. And there's going to be a link below to that. And then just those of you in the U.S. would be inclined to spell Madison a different way. It's M-A-D-I-S-E-N, Harper, H-A-R-P-E-R. Madison, I thank you so much for being on the show. I have had a blast. As always, I learned a ton from talking to you and got a lot of great insights. And I know our listeners are going to love this. Uh, But thank you so much, and I wish you the best of luck with everything that you're doing, and I hope we can stay in touch. Thanks, Jeff, and here's to your limitless life, too. Thanks for joining us on the How to Quit Working Show. Tune in next time when we'll talk to another amazing person just like you who is now living the ultimate life of freedom and doing it on their terms. If you want to learn how to quit working and get these episodes delivered directly to you, visit howtoquitworkingshow.com.